We go down there and play the most diabolical golf course that I'd ever seen. There are boulders about the size of cantaloupes, and I thought, who in the hell built this golf course? It was Pete Dye. Pete Dye, the most unique name in golf course architecture. I have cursed his golf courses a few times. I've had a lot of pros say, the guy golf courses, they, 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 when you look at it, it deceives them. Well, that's part of the game. You want to look like at the end of the world. Island greens, volcano bunkers, railroad ties. His courses host dozens of golf's biggest tournaments, and his vision of a golf course has transformed how the game is played. In my career, Pete Dye has had the biggest single impact in how the game is played than any other factor in the game. He's singular in this sport. I don't think there's anyone else like him. Oh, Pete's a crusty old son of a gun. Pete's a light lot like Columbo. You know, he knows the answer to the, to the mystery. He just has to get someone to confess. Cover Town's probably pretty perfect. There's not another golf course in America that, uh, that can stay with it from tee to green, just the quality of shots that you have to play. Everything about Harbor Town to me is, uh, you can't design a better golf course. TPC Sawgrass, for example, to me is almost an uncomfortable course because I'm always hitting across something. He not only challenges your ability, he challenges what your emotions are gonna be after you messed up. When you hit it offline, you're really dead. Very, very difficult golf courses. I try uh, to make the golf course tell a story, I guess you might say. And his stories run golf holes through the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and transform prairies into works of art. Everybody asks me what my favorite hole is. Probably, I don't, like everybody else, be the last one on birdie to be the favorite hole. Pete is a Van Gogh. He's a real artist. He's very much an individualist and a character. I go get that meat hound of mine. Come on down here. For God's sakes, can't you just sit still for one minute? I've never seen him without a dog. And maybe that's who he talks to to get some of these ideas. You know, where would that dog bury a bone? Well, that's a good spot for a bunker. He does most of his uh, golf designing in the dirt, so to speak. Well, you know, I don't, I'm not too good on drawing plans, so I keep coming here and keep looking at it. Probably if you give him a set of plans, he would know what to do with them. I love the construction end of the golf course. He wants to be out, you know, with the guys on the tractors, on the dozers, on the shapers. So if you're not there to tell them what to do, boy, you're in bad shape. His approach is, is novel. It's just not cookie cutter stuff. What are these bunkers that kind of come up out of the cone? I have no idea what you want to call them. I've never done them before, never in my life. But I like it. There'll be many people say over the years that he has overdone it with a, with a few courses. If you want to say the word bizarre, if you want to say the word penal. You know, Pete seems to want to build a golf course that's very much in keeping with nature. And they uh, intimidate the great players of the world. I built the PGA, the stadium course in, in La Quinta, and the pros went out there and played it and they condemned it. Said they'd never go back, too hard. He's always out there having fun creating. He's not out there trying to be mean. He's just trying to come up with something else. And you know, it's, it's you know, everything to him is his next great design. It's a little modification, this knob here. And I can modify that bunker, push it into the green. I don't think he's really concerned with uh, his legacy, but he certainly has left one with uh, golf courses that are challenging, interesting, fun, you know, courses that'll live on, obviously, well past him. Here, come here. Not just come here. Come. <laughs> you meat hound.